Thank you for joining us today for HXGN TV. I'm your host, Laura Beth Ezel, with Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure. And today we are discussing Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure's integration of the very robust and full feature design tools from our integration partner, Geospatial Innovations Incorporated. And joining us today is Darby McKee with GSI. He is the Director of Business Operations, and we thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. So I understand that you know the legacy of the design tools optimization dates back, you said, to the early 90s. So can you give us, I guess, a little history uh, lesson on the path in today's distribution design uh, studio? Yeah, you bet. So in the early 90s, we actually were more of a consulting company. So we were doing design work for utilities, um, taking on their big projects, both transmission mm -hmm. and distribution. Um, we had some robust engineering tools and optimization engines, and we started writing tools around those to help us be more efficient to you know, speed up our processes as well. Didn't take long for that to turn into product, and then we started being more of a software company and pushing that product down the road. So went from optimization and consulting to our LD Pro product and now mm -hmm. to our distribution design studio product. If you look at the evolution of these tools over time, you know, what are some of the most critical features of a, you know, the new DDS? Um, so even back from the beginning, design tools were mainly you know, spreadsheets and mm -hmm. not very visual. Um, so as we started moving into more of a visual um, user interface, it made things easier for people, um, kind of duplicated more of what they were typically do on paper and those types of things. Okay. Um, and then as we move further into the distribution design studio product, really morphing into mobile workflows, um, taking, making use of technologies for in the field design, etc., cetera, um, and really trying to take away um, having to work in multiple systems. Okay. So all of our tools tie back to you know, the GIS as well as the, the work management material systems and take um, the designer out of having to move between all of those systems all the time. So let's correlate this to you know, an ROI. You know, what are some of the types of advantages that customers can expect from using DDS? I think probably the biggest advantage is uh, speed and efficiency. Okay. So they're in an environment that was set up directly for designers that they're comfortable in. It's uh, getting the right units and materials at the right locations and then we automate the process of visualizing that and all of your reports and outputs as well as check against utility standards and um, NESC and other compliance regulations that are required by those utilities. Um, what we've heard a lot is, is with uh, especially newer designers coming in, it's nice to have that as a backstop so that you know when you're designing, you're designing to code and to the utility standards. Our Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure team has spent a significant amount of time, you know, working on the, uh, the development of the best level of integration of this distribution design studio with your technology group. You know, what can you tell us about, you know, this integration and how it differs from, um, you know, I guess other partnerships out there, other integrations in the industry? Right, so a lot of integrations end up being very custom and customized mm -hmm. for the situation. Um, we took a, a data-centric approach um, with Hexagon, so we are able to mimic and tie the models together. So when a user is designing in our product, they're actually keeping track and updating um, the GIS in the same fashion, so they okay. don't have to visit two different models. Um, it's pretty seamless to them. They just feel like they're designing, but the back, um, back to the GIS is happening for them. Um, gives them access up front. So the nice thing about the design tool is when you're designing, we can view all of the hexagon asset information directly in the design tool, whether you're connected or disconnected in the field. And you can design directly mm -hmm. um, uh, tapping off of that infrastructure or doing other types of maintenance work directly on that infrastructure. Darby, what are some trends that you see you know, in the industry uh, when it comes to automation of design? Mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest trends are mobility and, and mm -hmm. flexibility. So depending on if um, you have smaller groups who are doing maybe simpler design types of work, they're doing uh, single pole extensions, service drops, those types of things, but you still need a tool that allows them to do a large reconductor or a large mm -hmm. subdivision and so forth. And so making sure that we can handle simplistic designs and more complex designs in the same tool um, inside that same environment, as well as a lot of mobility. I think people are trying to see how they can leverage technology, whether it's GPS and field types of things as well, to be more efficient. Design flexibility is obviously very impressive and, and um, something that's great with this integration to be able to take advantage of. You know, so to program for the basic repetitive design workflow um, is one element, but the design tool has also been able to handle, like you kind of mentioned, more complex solutions. Kind of go into that more. 
You bet. So all of our design tool lays on top of a full uh, multi-model scenario. So we have a physical model, we have an electrical mm -hmm. model. When, we, when I talk about that, that model is being developed whether you're doing a single pull extension or whether you're doing a full um, subdivision. But with those models, you can view things in 3D and graphically, look at structural mm -hmm. compliance, you can look at clearances. Um, if you have a complex design where you need to do a full electrical analysis or an optimization of your design, all of those things are, are layered into the application. So if you don't need those, you don't have necessarily mm -hmm. have to employ those, but they've all been componentized so we can turn those on as needed by design or by designer. Can you give me some examples of customers or feedback that you've gotten from customers who are using the, the DDS and G technology? Mm -hmm. Um, so the biggest difference, I think, is the, the surprise and the ease of use of the application. Um, we spent a lot of time from the early 90s till today really th learning about the environments designers want to be in, kind of what their challenges are, um, how they think about design, and really set the user interface up to, you know, mm -hmm. to mimic that so that it's easy for them to step in the tool and make, um, make progress early. So rather than having a new designer who maybe takes six eight months to mm -hmm. be productive and understand the rules of the utility and so forth. They can come in and be productive right of way. Um, the engines inside, the rule base, keep, make sure they're designed inside of the utility standards and keeping things compliant so it makes that much simpler. What about future enhancements? What you can tell me about future? Um, future enhancements, so we continue to do a lot, many things graphically. So lots of representations um, so that you can see and view what, um, what your design is um, without having to look through all of your standards and the details of all of those things. So we continue to build out our graphical piece of it and then our mobility side of the, the house as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to go in the field, take measurements and have that design happen for you when you're, you're basically doing your site visits. What advice could you give to some customers that are looking at adopting a, a solution uh, you know, and using both Hexagon and a DDS solution? Um, I think the, uh, the biggest thing to think about is what's your total workflow look like and really mm -hmm. think about what's it take for a design to do from beginning to end and not just the design component itself, but you have to think about, okay, how am I getting this information? How am I going to make use of this? What information do my designers really need? And how does that information need to go back and fill other systems? And so if you think of that full picture, um, it helps mm -hmm. you pick a solution that's going to fit better for you and your, your future needs. All right. Well, I appreciate your partnership and thank you for your insight and time today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. If you would learn, like to learn more about Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure, you can go to hexagonsafetyinfrastructure.com or for more on HXGN TV and to watch additional episodes, you can go to hxgntv.com. Thanks for watching.